Alright y'all, welcome back to Octopath Traveler with Zach from the Shy Guys. Last episode we took on these two bosses down here, and since then, I went on and I fought this boss, this boss, and this boss right here for episode 36, and then I checked the recording right after the episode finished, and the recording wasn't there. There was some kind of problem. It only re didn't record the episode. So what I did was uh, I backed out of the game and um, restarted the game. And there's no place to save in here. So I went back and beat these two bosses off screen. And now I'm going to uh, redo this episode and fight these three bosses. But um, I don't mind too much. I, I was kind of sad, but uh, I went over to the... Uh, there's a place on campus that stays open pretty late. I got a Kentucky wrap, and that made me happier. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty good, too. How do you know? It has some chicken on there and chicken in it and uh, bacon and lettuce and, like, hot mustard. It was good. But, you know, okay, I'm ready to get back to this. And uh, I'd really like to finish all the recording tonight. Obviously, it's going to be coming out in separate episodes. But, um, yeah, let's... Uh, get back to the battles for these bosses and let me show you something real quick i changed alfin no not alfin but i changed cyrus back from sorcerer to dancer and i changed uh primrose from scholar to the uh sorcerer and so i think that's going to help me out a little bit plus i had a, a really good idea of using um both cyrus's and alfin's divine skills on haunted and then she can use like the BP stat boosts on the whole party and she can use her uh, other um, her, her other star seer skills on the whole party and so I may try to do that and just see how that works out right here but um, okay first up is Simeon right no Mattias I already fought Simeon I get that you confused a little bit but um yeah I've already I've already done this battle but y'all haven't y'all didn't see me do it so let's do it again it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Let's uh, start off by hitting him with an axe. Okay. Give me a uh, analyze on him, Cyrus. So he has a hundred forty-eight thousand health. Let's um, do that. Here we go. And one of those. And now I should be able to break his shield, no problem. Let's do a. Uh, Let's do a um, star song is what I want on Ulbrich. And I, I did change Ulbrich's, uh, I changed Ulbrich's and Cyrus's support skills a little bit because I realized that I what I had going on wasn't uh, like the very best they could be. But yeah, I think they're good now. But what I'm gonna do right here is, uh, I think I'm just gonna break a shield with Ulbrich. Then I'm gonna have Cyrus do a, uh, let's see. Let's do another Analyze on him. Where's my Analyze? There it is. Okay, Swords. Good to know. Bring it on. And Alfin, give us a little bit of health, please. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit him with a Wind Hills Battle Cry. I love that move, it's amazing. And I'm gonna have Haunted do Drake Finney's Rage. And now, oh that's just amazing. Now I'm going to uh, use Siltegia's Seduction on Haunted. And Alfred's Auspices on Haunted. So now we are set. I'd also like to get up some reflective deals with Alfin, but uh, first let's um. Okay, I want to break a shield next turn. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a uh, Guardian Lion Dog. Don't break a shield good that was decent and haunt it I'm gonna have you do 
a BP boost for everyone. And this is going to last a while because he's going to use it twice. That is amazing. Oh, that is that is so good. Okay. Cyrus. Just hit him with some ice, I suppose. Yeah. Very nice. I'm going to have Alfin heal up a little bit, everyone. We are so set. I mean... Oh man, we are just golden. I'm going to have Ulbrich break a shield. Cyrus, I'm going to have you do a uh, one more analyze on him. So he's at 92,000. On it, give me a star song on everybody twice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing. The best you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. Let me, uh... I don't even know what to do with Alvin right now. Let's just, uh... Let's use poison. Pick your poison. Okay. So, Ulbrich, I want you to wreck this scrub. Did you see that? Double, double VP right there. So, Wind Hill's Battle Cry. Fantastic. Amazing. On it. Dre Finji's Rage. Kaboom. Now give me a... Give me a Blizzard Cyrus. Is that what I want? That is what I want. Fantastic. And Alvin. Give me a... Uh, give me a Amputation. And Amputation. Sweet. Great turn. That hardly did anything because everyone has uh, the defensive stuff from Haunted. Okay, might as well uh, heal up a little bit though. Is that better? We've almost got this guy beat. I mean, this is no problem at all. Hit him with, a, hit him with an axe. Um, hit him with the sword. Actually, let's do this. Guardian Lion Dog. Okay, thank goodness we didn't break a shield right there. And, uh... Let's just hit him with a, uh... Moonlight Waltz, I suppose. Okay. Now, over... Break a shield. Cyrus, hit him with the blizzard. I think we can beat him in this turn, this next turn. Bring it on. Okay, Alfin, just uh, smack him with an axe and haunt it. I'm gonna have you use Star Song on over. Okay, we're set. Three Pinky's rage. Oh yeah, he's dead. That was so easy. Can't believe how that well that went. Let's read this st uh, stone. Okay, from the Diary of Mattias, Prophet of the Accursed Flame. I have already read this, but y'all haven't heard it, so I'm going to read it. Once I too believed in the teachings of the Sacred Flame. I led the people in its light as a servant of the church. No one could have doubted that I was anything but a pious believer in those days. And when I look back upon it now, it all seems so painfully foolish. When was it that I first began to doubt the flame? Perhaps it was after I met Lyblack? But no, that was but the catalyst to what was already growing within me. Even before Lyblack appeared, those feelings had taken root in my heart. The small village whose church I had been appointed to was destroyed in a conflagration, started by a capricious strike of lightning. The flame spread before we even knew what was happening, but before we knew it, we were engulfed in hell's fire. Countless were lost to the flames, even the innocent young children who I would loved so dearly. They had committed no sins. They did not deserve to have their flesh seared and their bones turned to ash. So I prayed to the flame. I prayed and prayed that their lives would be spared. Fool that I was, even after they were dead and gone, I believed that if I prayed hard enough, they might return to us, that a miracle might occur. And so I offered up every scrap of faith that I had, until at long last I realized the truth. Believing in the sacred flame and praying to it would not bring about a miracle. And if my faith could not bring me and those I loved succor in our time of greatest need, then it was worthless. It did not matter to me if the power I needed was forbidden, 
I would use that power for the force of good and bring about miracles. That was the only, that was the true faith to which my eyes were finally open. It was not something I had been tricked into by another. I had reached enlightenment. It was only fitting that such a revelation came to me, the one true savior. While Lie Black may not have been responsible for my enlightenment, I am still grateful to her. After all, she is the one who granted me the blessing of a hundred years free from aging. The dark secrets written in that tome can allow a man to cheat death, and I owe her a debt for sharing them with me. I gained eternal life, or close enough, as a true saver should, and then took it upon myself as my duty to save as many people as I could with the power granted to me, and so I set out to kindle a darker flame in our realm. If the sacred flame could be weakened, yet more of Galdera's accursed power would seep through the gate of fitness, and I would be able to claim even greater strength for myself. I hid myself away from those in the church who wished to stop me, but the long march of time was my ally. It wore away the lives and the memories of any and all who once knew me, until it was as if my face had been washed away like words written in sand. None who still live would remember me as an apostate of the church. With enough leaves, all things are possible. Even attaining a new name is little challenge. And so I worked my way back into the church's graces as the traitor Mattias. Even the venerable Archbishop Joseph did not su suspect me for a moment. Every step of the way, fate has shown me that I am in the right. I was able to uncover Galdera's altar because I am right. I was able to use a fragment of Galdera's power to bring about a miracle because I'm right. I could become the savior of Whisper Mill and command its people to do my wishes because I am right. With Simeon as an ally, I never wanted for money nor power. The Obsidians served me well whether they knew it or not. Simeon, never, Simeon claimed never to have spoken to, of me to the others. I know not if he meant to use me as a secret weapon against the others, if the need ever arose, or if it was simply that he did not trust me, but it hardly mattered. After laboring for so many decades, the time had come at last. I had succeeded in debilitating Archbishop Joseph with the poison the Obsidians had provided me. It was a beautiful poison. No one would ever expect it was anything but a natural death. All that remained for me to do was cast a dark shadow on the heart of Liana, the next flame bearer, and the sacred flame would soon turn black. That is what was meant to be. That is what was about to be. But no. Dang it all to the farthest reaches of hell. The culminations of all I had worked for was mere inches away, so close I could feel the kiss of the accursed flame. And instead it was all snatched away, that fire snuffed out to leave me in utter darkness and despair. I am the savior. I was meant to bring Galdera's flame to the world. Why should I be left in this black hell? It is dark here, the blackness. It is all consuming, darker than a thousand starless nights. Please someone, anyone, bring me some light. <sighs> That's a lot of reading, but that is pretty, pretty awesome. That was some awesome backstory plus we know for sure now that Archbishop Joseph was poisoned and he didn't just die naturally but um goodness that wasn't a short a short short one that was a long one but let's get on to the next battle no nah, this guy this headmaster Yvonne who I dislike okay let's hit him with the staff Okay, the hunt now I'm going to, um... Can't remember what, th what they're weak to anymore. Let's, uh... I think he's weak to daggers. Yeah, okay. Now, I don't want to break his shield until next turn. So, what I'm going to do is use Thousand Spears. Okay, we hit each skeleton once, so that's decent. Um, tornadoes are no big deal, I suppose. Let's use a, uh, I can't remember what the last thing he's weak to is. Let's do an analyze on him. Light, okay. Okay, those tornadoes are building up and hurting a little bit. Alright, get your shield broke. Sweet. Okay, I won't hunt it to um won't hunt it to use Star Song on Ulbrick. Okie dokie, and Alfin use heal wounds. Is that better? Okay, we're in good shape. 
can't remember what these guys are weak to, but I have a feeling that it was ice. Maybe. Yeah, let's use ice. It wasn't ice. I can't remember what they were weak to. Let's use Wind Hills Battle Cry. These skeletons actually have a lot of health. I found out when I fought them a little while ago. Can't remember exactly how much. What I'm gonna do here though is the same thing I did last battle. Let's use uh, Strategic Seduction on Haunted. I'm gonna have Haunted do a uh, Drake Finney's Rage. Yeah, I'm telling you, they, these skeletons have a ton of health. And uh, Alfred's Auspices. Awesome. So as long as Haunted doesn't die right here, I don't think she will. Yeah, she's good. Let's use... Um, I guess I can just stab him. Right? Is there anything else I want Ulbrich to do? Yeah, let's... Yeah, let's go for... Yeah, let's hit him with a knife. Uh oh Okay, it's fine. Now, I want to do an Analyze on Yvonne. He's at 117,000. Okay, on it, use um, BP Boost. Very nice. Very nice. So we have four turns of that. Let's use a uh, Heal Wounds. Better. Next turn, I'm going to have Haunted use the uh, Star Song on everyone. Okay. Okay, we're all good. Star Song on everyone twice. Okay. Let's use a Firestorm. Okay, don't kill anyone. Awesome. We've all got amazing defense right now, so we're good. Okay, uh... Yeah, I want to break a shield this turn. I think. I could wait, I suppose. Yeah, let's, uh, let's break a shield next turn. Here goes nothing. This turn, let's use a heal wounds. Okay. Now Alf, hit him with the staff. Very good. Alrighty, let's um, let's use thousand spears and try to break these skeleton shields. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Oh, we are so golden right now. We're ama this is just great. Let's use a um. Let's use lightning. Let's see if they're weak to lightning. They are weak to lightning, and they're dead. Okay. What next? On it, use a. Uh... So she she's out of the thing that affects everyone. That's fine. Let's use um. Divination on Ulrich. Maybe I think we may be able to, to defeat him this turn. Maybe. Alfin, give me a um. Give me an Alfred's Elfric's auspices on Cyrus. Okay. And now Cyrus, give me a Firestorm. Fantastic. And one more. Amazing. Okay. Over. Wreck that scrub. Beautiful. I don't think I'm going to beat him this turn, but I am coming close. Okay. What next? Wonder if I can, um. 
I wonder if I can break his shield before he gets the chance to move in. Here goes nothing. Let's do one of those. Victory shall be mine. One of those. <laughs> one of these. Oh yeah, we're good. Okay. Victory shall now I'm be gonna have Ulbrich. Uh, Ulbrich, what do you want to do right here? Just stab him once, I suppose. Come I didn't use a um, star song on Ulbrich. Obey the stars. All right. Okay, Alfin. I want you to heal us all up a good bit. Yeah, let's just let's use a uh, heal wounds. Is that better? Okay, and Cyrus break a shield. Yeah, this is it for him. Oh yeah, he is done for right here. <laughs> Another easy battle. <laughs> what a scrub. I feel kind of overpowered. I'm not going to lie. I feel a little bit overpowered. Let's read this though. From the diary, diary of Headmaster Yvonne of the Royal Academy. It was 15 years ago when I first learned of that tome. The headmaster's chair was but a dream to me in those days, when my prize student Lucia brought a young woman to me. The woman told me that I was the best, <coughs> excuse me, that I was the best suited to the position of headmaster, that there was no knowledge, no position that should be off limits to a man of my ability. And so she taught me many things, one being the existence of ancient tomes containing the long forgotten secrets of old. There are several volumes of forb forbidden writings in Alice Dem's great libraries, and no eyes but the headmasters are allowed to look upon them. The tome in question is one of these. It is the last extant tract of the legendary sage known as Salomon, whose name lives on in history, though the land of his birth, the kingdom of Burstein, has long since been forgotten. Long has it been said that he who can decipher its true meaning will obtain power over even life and death. The current headmaster is not worthy of certain such knowledge. What he lacks in intellect only pales to what he lacks in character. I cannot depend on him. I would depend on you. She wishes to decipher the secrets of the tome and share its knowledge with the worthy alone. Thus a great scholar was needed, one who would be able to fully understand the arcane truths within the tome. The doddering fool who now serves as headmaster could never do such a thing, but a genius such as you, Yvonne? Surely you, of all scholars in the realm, are up to the task. Yes, that was how she persuaded me. It was true that I bore little resemblance to the former headmaster, who was interested in nothing but his studies, and whose only praiseworthy trait was his tenacity in that single-minded pursuit. But I was different. I knew that knowledge was worth its weight in gold, and more critically, my intellect far outstripped his. How could the idiots around me fail to realize this? This woman told me that the, the then headmaster holding a lofty office, he had done so... Excuse me. This woman told me that the then headmaster holding a lofty office he had done so little to deserve was tantamount to sin, and I agreed. When she asked it me if I could remove him, I assured her that it would be the simplest of tasks. And so, I had him assassinated just as she wished, leaving not a trace of evidence behind to incriminate myself. Shortly after, I ascended to the headmaster's seat in his place. I encountered the strange woman only once more after that day. When I reported to her that I had murdered the former headmaster, she flashed a chilling smile and simply replied, So you did. Then she walked away, never again to appear before me. Perhaps removing that man was all she wanted to of me after all, I thought. It was no matter. The tome was in my grasp, and I immediately set myself to uncovering its secrets. All the rumors I heard were true. It was a work of staggering genius. With Lucia as my assistant, I was able to obtain other rare and ancient texts from the, that woman, even if I never saw her again. Yes, everything was going just as I had planned, and power beyond the imagination was finally within my reach. How did it all come to this? Dang the accursed Lucia. Dang that heartless, conniving witch. How did I not see? She meant to use me from the very start. I was one who unlocked the secrets. I who constructed the basic theories of how to effectively control life and death. And as soon as I had done that, she had no more need for me. 
That was why she gave me a flawed blood crystal and led Cyrus right to me so that she could dispose of me without dirtying her own hands. You despicable, loathsome, hateful woman. Death has not cooled my fury, but only fueled it to greater heights. Curse you, curse you and that unholy witch you brought to my side. May the deceitful Lucia burn for all eternity. May the foul lie black be banished beyond the farthest reaches of hell. Boom, 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 boom. So yeah, that was another one with a lot of reading, but uh, pretty cool insight into his character. Let's uh, get some of that. I'm running a little, little low on inspiring plums. Okay, I'm ready for the next one. Big old tiger dude. Alrighty. I don't remember what he's weak to. Maybe bows. Actually, let's do a leg hold trap on him. Victory shall be mine. I feel like he's weak to bows. Or maybe his axes. Let's try axes. Nope. Staff. Nope. Cyrus, tell me what he's weak to. Okay, that's not the one I wanted to see. I wanted to see the, the ones before the five. Okay, hit him with a firestorm. Okay, Ulbrich, I want you to hit him with a guardian lion dog. No, he's not with the swords. Okay, I'll hit him with the holy light. Maybe, maybe it is arrows. Rain of arrows. Yep. Very nice. Okay. Now let's do this. Strategic seduction on Hanit. And Drayfindy's rage. Sweet. Give me Windhill's battle cry. Yeah, I do feel a little bit overpowered right now. Use Alfred's auspices on Haunted. So now she can give us the BP boost and the other stuff that I need. Okay, that's fine. Let's use a heal wounds. Okay, Cyrus, use a uh, firestorm. Over hit him with a. Um, let's hit him with a thousand spears. But I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to break a shield. Don't break a shield. Okay, okay. That's good. Let's use a uh, BP boost. Twice. Amazing. Okay. Bring it on. Oh, Al Alfin's uh, twenty-five percent dodge ability just kicked in right there. Okay, let's um. Yeah, let's heal heal some wounds. And right here, let's do a star song. Obey in the stars. Obey in the stars. Amazing. Okay. Now, let's break a shield. Oh, yeah. Amazing. We're so good. Let's do a, uh... Let's just hit him with the firestorm. Very nice. Now what I'm going to do is a uh, Drake Indy's Rage. Sweet. I'm going to do an Alfred's Auspices for Cyrus. Now I'm going to do a uh, Firestorm. 
That's about 32,000 damage. Okay, uh, Brand's Thunder, but Wilhelm's Battle Cry. Not Wilhelm, but Wind Healed. The Wind Held Helm Scream slash the Wind Held Battle Cry. It's very similar, actually. Okay, which that hurt a little bit, but it would have hurt a lot more if we didn't have uh, the stuff for uh, the stuff that Haunted just gave us defensively. Okay, Haunted, give us a um, let's do a uh, rain of arrows. Okay. Now I'm going to uh. Stab him once. Alrighty. So I guess I'm gonna have you use fire. And again. Sweet. I think I may be able to beat him in this next turn, actually. Let's use a firestorm. Break his shield. Very nice. Now, Ulrich use a, uh... I'm not entirely sure. Let's just use an Abide. I'm gonna have Haunted use... Divination on Ulrich. And Alfred, I just want you to heal everybody up a little bit. Very nice. Okay, on it. Drake Finney's Rage. Sweet. That was so good. Okay, can I beat him right here? I think he's dead. Oh, yeah. That was incredibly quick. Okay, let's read this. From the diary of Graham Crossford, part the first. Grave tidings reached me as I was passing through Victor's Hollow in my travels. My beloved's condition had worsened. I knew my journey must be brought to a swift conclusion, lest I be too late in the end. I made up my mind to sail across the verdant deep. The final ingredient I required was the pinion of an ogre eagle, that most fearsome beast of the sky. They're said to make their home in the forest of Rubay, beyond the vast emerald sea. When I arrived at the harbor, there was only one ship to be found. It was a grand one, no mistaking that, but the captain was none other than Leon Bestral. I recognized him at once, of course. Who could travel these lands without hearing a tale or ten of the dread pirate captain, the very mention of whose name would set even the bravest sailor's heart pounding and palms sweating? Yet I found the man himself to be quite different from the one spoken of in legend. Captain Leon Bestral stood at the helm of a merchant trader, which was preparing to hoist sail at the very moment I came upon it. I told him of my haste and implored that he let me aboard. I'm afraid I don't just let anyone aboard my ship, he told me, and I felt as though I was being put to some kind of test. It's clear this was a man who did not easily place his trust in others. My coin purse, as impoverished as my hopes, I held out the only thing I could, of value I could offer, my journal. This is the most valuable of my possessions, I explained. Within it, you will find a, ver a record of every region in this vast continent every town I have visited, and every path I have tread. Surely such knowledge is worth the trouble of having one more body aboard your ship for this voyage. After all, what need had I of such a log then? My journey was nearly over. All that remained was to obtain the final ingredient and hasten home to my beloved side. Captain Leon gave a boisterous laugh and gestured me onto his ship with a grin. You'd have me believe the leaves of that old book are more valuable than the leaves in my coffers? You must have had quite the journey. I wouldn't mind hearing about it, as you swap my decks. As the ship tossed about the stormy sea, my thoughts drifted ahead of the winds to where my wife awaited me. I could see her face in my mind so clearly that it felt as though I was it was only minutes ago that we parted, not countless moons, and I prayed that the flame would guide me back to her while that gentle smile still graced her lips. It's almost finished at last, my love. Pray wait for me just a little longer. I know not what has become of my journal since I parted ways with Captain Leon. But looking back, I am relieved that it left my hands when it did. Surely, it is better that my final entry ended with some traces of hope, rather than the bitter pain I would eventually find at Journey's End. 
Yeah, that is something else. So, uh... You know what? We're only 35 minutes into this episode. So what I'm going to do is fight this next boss. Give me these. Okay. I'm not sure who this one is. I haven't done this one yet. But we're kind of flying through this. So let's keep going. <laughs> oh my fun. goodness, is this guy. I hate him. This Warner. Yeah, an aura of dread pervades the battlefield. So what I'm going to do is analyze him first and foremost. 167,000 health. Alrighty. He is oppressing me right now. I don't like it. Alright, fool. I don't know what you're weak to. But I hope you're weak to swords. I, don't, I feel like he's not weak to swords. Let's just hit him with a knife. Okay. Come in. If thou Same thing from Haunted. All right. Just hit him with an axe and see if that'll do anything. <laughs> okay, axes are good. Cyrus, give me one more analyze, please. Wind. Okay. Here we go. No one has wind on this team. Alfin, uh, yeah, let's break a shield. Oh, we're gonna have you uh stab him. <laughs> Very nice. Now I'm going to have Haunted use Star Song on Ulbrich. Get rid of... It's not going to boost him. Oh yeah, it is going to boost him. A little bit. It's not going to boost his attack because his attack was lowered already. Let's just do that. Okay, good start. Sweet. Okay, Haunted. Drake Finney's Rage. Okay, Cyrus. Same thing as the last couple of battles. So teaches seduction on Haunted. So Haunted's abilities will affect everyone. And Alfred. Elfric's auspices on Haunted. Very good. Okay, scrub. Over hit him with an axe. Alfin hit him with an axe. No, I'm gonna have Alfin heal everyone up a little bit. Heal wounds. Okay, Haunted, use your stuff, your BP boost. Twice. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. It's amazing. Okay, Cyrus, give me uh, one more analyze on him, please. He's at 133,000, that's good to know. And he's weak to lightning, but that's not going to help me right now. Okay, um, Alfin wants you to uh, hit, hit him with an axe. Ulbrich, hit him with an axe. And Haunted, use Star Song on everyone, twice. So amazing. Witchery. Okay, Cyrus, um, you can't do anything, really. So let's do a, uh, let's just hit him with some lightning, I suppose. Get off a little bit of damage. Ha, okay. So, uh, heal wounds. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, let's heal wounds, I think. No, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into a... Let's do that. Okay. And now Ulbrich can do this. And Cyrus can... Um... Yeah, Cyrus can just hit him with lightning. Okay. No, I don't want to boost. I want to uh, hit him with an axe. Awesome. Bring it on. Okay, let's uh. No, I need to heal. Let's do a heal wounds on everyone, and next turn I can use. I can save Alfin's VP, I suppose. Okay. Drew Fendi's rage. 
cowering before the huntress. Kaboom. Over, give me your Windhill's battle cry. So good. Okay, Cyrus, give me a uh, lightning blast. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, that's fine. That's fine too. Cyrus hit him with some lightning. Okay, Haunted can't boost right now, which isn't ideal. But it's not too big of a deal, I don't suppose. Let's stab it. Now if we can just use Rehabilitate. Alright. We're in good shape. Lightning Blast. I wonder if I can beat him this next turn. I don't think so, but it would it would make me happy if I could. So let's do this. Okay, Alfin hit him with a Holy Light. And, uh, yeah, let's stab him. Break his shield. Okay, Cyrus. Give us a, uh, Lightning Blast. Amazing. Over, give us your battle cry. Oh yeah, we're just running through these people. Alvin, give me a um, give me a boosted heal wounds, I suppose. Is that better? And taunt it. Drayfindy's rage. He is done for. What an easy boss. We're moving on to the next one, this episode. But first, let's read this tombstone, or whatever it is. From the records of Lord Werner of Riverford, Hornburg will fall. I still remember her smile as she said the words. It was a score of years ago now, mayhap more. A simple sellsword I was then, when she came to me with a sack full of leaves and a dark promise in her eyes. She knew as well as I did that I had far greater aspirations than selling my sword for coin, but coin would have to be, my, be a start, and what a start she offered me. Not only the leaves to free me from another man's employ, but as much as I asked for to invest in my plot and establish the connections I would need. The life I'd always dreamed of was finally in my grasp. I could use her. I could use her to get all that I'd ever wanted. Or so I thought. And so I took the girl up on her offer and began my plot to bring down an entire kingdom. I would need men if I were to ac accomplish anything. So I created my own sellsword company. The Black Brotherhood, I called them. I spent three years doing nothing but gathering information on Hornburg. Then, using what I had learned, I began to systematically remove any obstacles that might stand in my path. I used the girl's connections to make my company of sellswords very much in demand in Hornburg. I took the worst of the lot those with no scruples and nowhere else to go, and made them out to be bandits and thieves. I set these villains to attacking the borders of Hornburg, and then my Black Brotherhood would turn them back. It was quite the performance. Other armies didn't stand a chance of beating us to the site of each battle. The skirmishes all took place far from the heart of Hornburg. We knew ahead of time exactly where they would happen. Since the foes we faced in those battles were in fact our own men, it was an easy feat to give the appearance of a crushing defeat. Through this farce, the Black Brotherhood won the hearts of the people living in those borderlands. Ingraining myself with the families of these borderlands, I used their inter introductions to buy trust among many powerful houses of Hornburg. The tales of the Black Brotherhood had spread throughout the realm by then, and I used that woman's money freely to strengthen my ties to powerful men within Hornburg and without. Still, King Alfred was well beloved by his people and his bannermen. It would be no small feat to win their hearts away from him, in which case things would become much easier if he were simply not in the picture. Hornburg would not last long without the people's love for their liege binding them together, and so my eyes landed upon Erhard, who held a bitter hatred for the king within him. I had him appointed as a member of the king's own guard so that he could be in the perfect position to do the deed. All that remained to be done was to give Erhard the chance that he was all too eager to seize. Mixing lies and truths, I lit a fire among this strong warrior I befriended. I could spout any lie and it would not have mattered. Humans care little for facts. They believe what they want to believe. In the end, it took me just 12 short years to bring Hornburg to ruin. 
After the kingdom fell, I decided the time had come to settle my accounts with that woman. I disbanded my company. Having no more new need for sell swords, I used the riches I had accumulated to buy myself the lands and status that would see me through my remaining days. To tell the honest truth, this was not easy. I could have gained even more had I remained at that woman's side. She could provide me with wealth and power beyond any human's wildest dreams. But to pursue this any further would be madness. Perhaps I was already mad to serve so long at her beck and call to bring down her beck and call to bring down a kingdom. She was beautiful. There can be no doubt of that. But did I desire her even for a moment? No, for within that attractive trapping was evil, pure evil, intent on bringing humanity to ruin. If a man dared touch any part of it, his own flesh would rot and fall away. She was a lethal poison. She was a witch. And so I cut myself off from her entirely and did not look back. Funny though, is it not? In the end, I could not escape her. She brought about my ruin as truly as if I had indulged in her poisonous touch. For in the end, just as I felt Hornberg, it was Hornberg's last night who laid me low. Yep, that did happen. Let me, uh, do this, and we will keep going. Alright, I'm ready for the next one. Let's go. Kick it butt. Oh, it's Darius. You don't stand a chance, scrub. Let my arrow fly in true. Hit, hit him with an axe. And over it, same deal. Hit him with an axe. Okay, stealing my items. I don't even care. Stealing HP. That's kind of sad. I don't want him to do that. Okay, let's do a uh, analyze. Daggers are good. Okay. Hit him with that. Okay, he's hurting me a little bit. And stealing my SP is really bad, actually. Okay, let's break his shield, I suppose. No, actually, let's do a, uh... Let's do a Star Song on Ulbrich. Okay. Now break his shield. Now I'm going to have Cyrus, um... Analyze him again. So he has 187,000. And he's weak to, uh... Wind. Okay, Ulrich, use your stuff. Windhill's battle cry. Okay. Alfin, use Elfric's auspices on Haunted. And Cyrus, use Siltegia's seduction on Haunted. And Haunted, use, um... Straight Finny's Rage. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, Ulrich, I want you to, uh, stab him. And Alfred, I want you to heal us all up a little bit. I'm gonna have Haunted use BP boost, like I've been doing. What next? Use it twice. And Cyrus. Analyze him one more time, please. Okay, he's already at 139,000. And he's weak to ice. Okay. Alvin is totally out of SP now, which is not good. Let's use a uh, normal and spiriting plum on him. To have overcues stab him. Okay, so he's actually giving me a ton, a little bit more trouble than the past people. Okay, stab him. Let's use Star Song on everyone. Very nice. Okie dokie, and uh, yeah, let's stab him. Stab him with Cyrus. What next? And stab him with Haunted. Okay. All right. Alfred, I want you to, uh. Let's get down to work. Alfred, I want you to defend. Okay. 
Now we need to use Elfric's auspices on Cyrus. Oh, we were overpowered. Let's use Windhill's battle cry. Alright, Hanna use Drey Fendi's Rage. Cyrus use your ice ability, Blizzard. Fantastic. Okay. He's shifting his defenses again. And a sweep isn't a, isn't a big deal. Okay, Ulrich use a uh, thousand spears. Not bad, not bad. I'm gonna break his shield next turn. Let's uh, let's hit him with a spear with haunt it. Right. Yeah, I want you to heal us all up a little bit. And finally, one more stab, and Ulrich can break a shield. Okay, haunt it. Use um, Star Song on Ulrich. And Cyrus, just use a uh. Just use a blizzard. Awesome. I wonder if I can beat him this turn. This coming up turn. Okay, defend. So that you can be in front. And then same thing, let's use Elfric's auspices on Cyrus. Very nice. Okay, over to use um, Echo's Battle Cry. I'm just doing so much damage. It makes me so happy. Okay, Cyrus. Blizzard. Can we beat him right here? We can. Fantastic. We've only got one more guy to go to. I'm trying I'm doing my best to finish this episode within an hour. Okay, let's read this real quick though. From the records of House Rabus. From the time of my first memories, I recall my father lecturing me on the origins of our house, on what it meant to be the head of the house, Ravis, and on what it was I must give my life to protect. My father had heard the same from his father, and his father from his father before him. The house of Ravis is blessed with many treasures, and many who covet them. To one born into the house of Ravis, such things are as natural and given as the blue of the sky above us. We are blessed with great treasures, and it is our duty to protect those treasures from those who would use them for ill. And among all the treasures, there were none greater than the Dragonstones. The Dragonstones were bestowed upon the first Lord Ravis by the legendary King Beowulf the I of Hornburg, and they have been passed down in our family ever since. The stones are said to have come from a f land far to the east, and they are worth far more than their weight in gold. But that is not where their true value lies. A power sleeps within them, and it makes them valuable behind beyond mortal comprehension. For the name Dragonstone is no simple fancy. The stones house the power of the great worms whose name they bear. It is said that the great sorcerer Odin Crossford used the power of the Dragonstones to seal shut the Gate of Fenris. Crossford had campaigned together with King Beowulf and aided him in the founding of Hornburg. My father, when he was still with us, once told me this. Power in itself is neither good nor evil. It is the man, the man who wields the blade who decides whether he fights for good or evil. That is why King Beowulf entrusted the stones to the man he trusted above all others, the loyal knight who would become the first lord of House Ravis. Great power can bring about boundless good or unfathomable evil. It is the duty of our house to keep the Dragonstones safe and protect them from those who would wield them for dark ends. Yet given enough time, great power will always awaken a hunger in others who would claim it for themselves. Once the Dragonstones came to House Ravis, there was no end to those who lusted after them. Not to mention our many other riches. Even kith and kin cannot be trusted to stand against such temptation. Once a rumor reached my ears that suspicious parties were inquiring into the whereabouts of the stones at the behest of my own relatives. It may be that those who sabotaged the carriage of my my wife and I are riding in did so at the bidding of my own blood. Oh my cord poor Cordelia, what is to become of you? You are too gentle to ever even doubt another. I fear that many will draw near to you, cloaked in the guise of kindness, and seek to deceive you. Cordelia, I can protect you no longer. No matter how I try to call out, my voice cannot reach you on the other side. Yet this I hope you know. 
Though a time may come when you are betrayed by one you trust, I believe your heart will not falter. You will not lose your faith in people, and this is for the best. For there are those truly worthy of your unwavering trust, and you will find them and keep them close at your side. I held on to such faith, and I was rewarded with a loyal companion worth a thousand other men. Heathcote has been true to me in all things. Surely such a friend will also appear before you, one worthy of your faith. And so I beg of you, Cordelia, never stop believing in others, for it is this faith that will save you in the end. Awesome. We've got one more dude to go. I'm not sure who we haven't done yet. So I'm not... Actually, I don't think we've done Haunted yet, have we? I think this is Haunted's battle. It is Haunted's battle. Gotta fight the dragon again. This is awesome. Okay. Hit him with an axe. On it, same thing. Cyrus, give me a analyze on him. 173,000. Okay. One more axe. On it. Let's break a shield. Ulbrich, I want you to abide. Okay. Alfin might as well uh, heal everyone up a little bit. Okay. Cyrus, give us one more analyze on him. Sweet to ice. Okay. Now, Alfin. Elfric's auspices is on Haunted. And if y'all remember, he uses a lot of uh, things that can be reflected. I need to put up some reflective buildings if I get the chance. Maybe. Maybe not. That, that may not be totally necessary this time. They're already wrecking it pretty good. Cyrus use uh so teach you seduction on haunted. Amazing. Dragonfire. I don't even care. Okay, let's use a uh, one more analyze on him. He's already at 118,000. Ulrich, I want you to use Guardian Lion Dog on him. Okay. What next? On it. BP boost. Oh yeah, this is perfect. Yeah, because I can break a shield with Ulrich next turn. Is that better? And I can use on it to use the uh, stat boosts. Victory shall be mine. Amazing. Okay, Cyrus. Just use a um. Just use a blizzard. Fantastic. Okay, I want to use Star Song on everyone twice. Here we go. Okay, Alfin. I want you to uh, just heal everyone up a little bit more. And now. Let's use Elfric's Auspices on Cyrus. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm quite going to finish this episode within an hour. But I am getting... I am going to finish it pretty close. Just a little bit over an hour. Okay, Cyrus, use Blizzard. Nope, Blizzard. Okie dokie. Amazing, and Haunted use Drake and his rage. <laughs> Alright. Use the dragon fire again, doesn't even matter though. Let's use a um, rain of arrows. Okay. Let's heal up with um, Alfin. I'm gonna have Ulbrick use um, Guardian Lion Dog again. Don't break your shield though. Don't break your shield. Okay, thank goodness. Um, Cyrus, I want you to use uh, Spiriting Plum on Ulbrick. 
Very good. Okay, Ulbrich. The battle is truly joyful. Hit him with the sword. Break his shield. Awesome. Let's use a uh, blizzard. Oh yeah, we've got him beat. This next turn. On it, use Star Song on Ulbrich. Bring it on. And Alfin just hit him with an axe because why not? Okay. Let's take him down right here. Windhill's about to cry. Drake and his rage. So easy. I can't believe how good this team is. And some level ups. Alright y'all. I'm going to read through this last thing and then we're going to end the episode. From the Diary of Graham Crossford, Part the Third. How could I have been so wrong? All I thought of was bringing, back, bringing my beloved back to the world of the living. When Live Black told me such a thing could be done, I was all too willing to swallow her pretty words. The moment that I arrived before the gate, I felt a finger of ice run along my spine. Even if my mind had been too slow to recognize it, my very body was repelled by the gate, or more precisely, by what lay beyond it. While I struggled to catch my breath, Lilac sketched out a magic circle on the ground with practiced ease. As she traced each twisted line and rune, her hand never faltered. How many times must she have prepared for this moment in her heart of hearts? It was at that moment that I realized just how she had longed for this moment, how fiercely she desired to see the dark ritual to completion. Only by this ritual may the gate be opened. It will not be pleasant for you, but you must bear it if you wish to see your beloved once more. So Live Black spoke as she led me to the center of the magic circle. As she began the ritual, the first thing I felt was a great pain that struck my entire body at once. It was followed by a strange sensation like nothing I had ever experienced. I felt myself stretching and swelling from the inside out. From the corner of my eye, I saw my own hand changing into something foreign and awful, and then the fear. Live Black watched my transformation with a glow in her eye. It was then I knew this ritual was not intended to open the gate and bring my wife back to me. Yes, I know what truly lies beyond the gate of fairness. That horror is what Liberlack sought to bring back to our world, and I was to be the vessel. I would be lying if I said I had no idea this was coming. My conversations with Liberlack had led me to suspect this ritual would not work for just anyone. It seemed that she needed my blood, the blood of House Crossford, descended from an ancient line of sorcerers. That is why I must be the one to prevent her plan from succeeding. For if I fail, she will only turn her sights upon my dear kid. No, that I cannot allow. So while I realized before the end what Live Black intended, I continued to accompany her in the, her aims so that I could see the truth of the ritual for myself, and foil it however I could. Little did I know that I was dealing with a power far, far beyond any mortal's control or conception. I felt my own sense of fear, of self growing faint and distant, and something else entirely filling me. I resisted it with all that I had but the, that presence. To that thing, a being like myself, a fragile human spirit, could be crushed as easily as an insect beneath your heel. Then, just before my mind was completely consumed by the darkness, I saw the smiling faces of my wife and son one last time. I screamed. The memory of my wife gave me the power to resist at that last critical moment. I imagine Live Black herself did not think I would e ever strike back at her, but I had already grown far stronger than I had been as a man. Even when I only managed to land a single blow to her, it cut her deep. She staggered back and the ritual was interrupted. This was my chance. All I need to do is chase her as she flies and cut her evil at the root, bringing everything to an end. This is what I m must do, but why am I? Where am I going? Why am I? I am turning into something else, something less and less human. So I wander the land without aim. There are periods of time, time I cannot remember. I come back to myself surrounded by destruction. No memories, but I know, it was me. These blackouts grow more frequent. They come for me now. No, stay your hand. I am no monster. I am a man. I am a man. Okay, I think what just happened was he became Red Eye. Yeah, okay, stuff's happened right now. I don't want stuff to happen until next episode. Okay, that door's just appearing. Alright y'all, when I come back next episode, we're going to go through that door and fight the final boss, and that will be the fin final finale of, the, of this whole...
playthrough and it's going to be awesome and i can't wait so stay tuned for the next episode if you enjoyed this episode please leave a like and subscribe and follow shy guys on twitter facebook and instagram at couple of shy guys i will see you in the next episode fellas thanks for watching goodbye